This is Inspiration, proudly sponsored by CND 24 Hour Nursing, committed and dedicated to care. Today on Inspiration, learning to love yourself. Let me tell you something that God does, and He's so brilliant. He hides jewels and treasures behind ugly veneers so that only people who truly want to find that beauty will have the courage to go beyond it. Inspire us to think a little higher. Believe and dream beyond here. Inspiration. Welcome to Inspiration, a boost of hope and encouragement for daily living. I'm Anastasia. Make the most of yourself, for that is all there is of you. Brilliantly stated by American philosopher Ralph Waldo Emerson. Today we continue with the second excerpt in the series, Learning to Love Yourself. And I want to invite you to be a fly on the wall in my class. Today I'm conducting a group experiment to find out how we define true beauty. I believe that the results represent a microcosm of the world at large and how we've learned to associate value and respect with appearance. It is a very distorted way of thinking. It is my intention today to shed light on this distortion and to help bring a new light that is healthy and in 2020 focus. In fact, it's a steaming hot bowl of perspective. So, pinkies up. Here's part two of Learning to Love Yourself. Be inspired. Inspired by His love. Inspiration. Now, I want to ask you what real beauty is. What is real beauty? And why I'm dealing with beauty is because this affects how we feel about ourselves, what we think is beautiful, and how we align ourselves in the whole scheme of what is beautiful. Um, comes into play. So I want to know, what, what is real beauty? What do you think is real beauty? Anybody? Attitude? Hmm? Whatever, whatever. I just want to know what you think it is. The character of a person? Anybody else? Something on the inside that shows on the outside. God's love inside. All righty. Uh, okay, well, see... What you think is beauty is beauty. I believe that a clean heart and a right spirit is beautiful. I believe that is the most beautiful thing in creation. And I believe no matter how you look facially or body-wise, it makes you beautiful. And I've also seen some very pretty ugly people. You know, people who look good outside and make up to the T. But spirit, like she said, a pig with a ring in his nose. You know, if someone tell you your pig with a ring in their nose, and you know, <laughs> you know, you, oh man. But what I want to do um, right now is I want to show you a number of pictures. And I want you to tell me, I just want you to shout out beautiful or not beautiful when I show you the pictures, okay? And don't be ashamed to say whatever you think. It's, it's up to you what you think is beautiful or not. Okay. Who said not beautiful? You don't think Tyra is beautiful? <laughs> okay. See, but you know, this look right here is exactly what the media says is beautiful. It's the um, the hair, the Caucasian hair. She already has green eyes, so the colorful eyes, the slender nose. Um, I said the hair already. And she's not too dark, so she's kind of. Creamy color, the size, you know, you got to be small. You cannot be going around being fat. You know what I mean? Okay, here's another picture. Beautiful or not beautiful? Wow. Beautiful or not beautiful? Okay, all right. She can pass? She keeping it real. <laughs> she is keeping it real. She is keeping it real. Beautiful or not beautiful? Men can say beautiful or be beautiful. Handsome, handsome or right? He's cute. Okay. Okay. All right. What about this guy? Now you notice the same person, right, Lana? This the same person you just say ugly. <laughs> Now you say he can pass. 
Huh? The other one was black and white. Okay, last one. Beautiful or not beautiful? Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Lana said, God help him. Lana, you have something else. Okay, that was my little experiment. Now let me give you some facts about who these people are. This, of course, is India Ari. She's a, a neo-soul neo um, artist. She is beautiful inside now. She looks kind of fat on that one. But, of course, this is Tyra Banks. And this gentleman, whom everyone said, mm -mm, he's ugly, and they laughed. Let me tell you something about this, this same gentleman. And what I, what I want to teach you today, or reinforce today, is not to judge a book by its cover. Not to look at people and come to conclusions, because there's more to the story. This man is named Roger Ebert. Have you ever heard of him? Siskel and Ebert. Ebert and Roker, Roper. He is he, the two thumbs up guy. He's the foremost movie critic in the world. His name is Roger Ebert. Roger Ebert is also Oprah Winfrey's mentor. He's the one who recommended that she go into syndication. And it is why she is a billionaire today. The same man that we think is so ugly. The reason that his mouth is the way it is. <laughs> Lana. The reason, <laughs> the reason his mouth is the way it is is because he recently survived throat cancer. His bottom jaw was removed, so he can't speak anymore. But this man, this picture was on Esquire, the cover of Esquire magazine. And a news reporter asked him about it, about the same picture. Her name is Christy Lemire. He said, so everyone seems pretty moved by the Esquire piece on you. But I'm wondering what you thought about it. He said, I thought, when I turned to it in the magazine, I got a jolt from the full image of the, the full page paragraph of my jaw drooping. He says, not a lovely sight. And he says, but then I'm not a lovely sight. That's how I look. And what I love about him is that he accepts it. This same picture has been mass produced all over the world. This same face that is so ugly. Let me tell you something that God does, and he is so brilliant. God hides diamonds in the coal. He hides jewels and treasures behind ugly veneers so that only people who truly want to find that beauty will have the courage to go beyond it. And so don't judge a book. Now let me tell you about this man who everyone says, he's handsome. He, hi. Him? How do you know? Yeah. No. No, this isn't Scott Peterson. Let me tell you who this is. Hi, Shaft, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Um, <laughs> this is Theodore Bundy, otherwise known as Ted Bundy. Ah. The most notorious serial killer in history. But that's exactly right, Cecile. That's how he got his victims. They said he was able to become angelic. And that's how he was able to fool people. He became a cannibal, a cannibal right, you? He ate his victims. The same man. He, he was executed. He got the electric chair. So, the same thing. Judging a book by its cover is dangerous. We've been trained to think that if a person is beautiful, they should be trusted. That's not true. You don't trust people because of how they look or distrust them because of how they look. You test their character and you discern people. You discern. Right? Can I share something with you too that may shock you? Jesus was ugly. He was physically ugly. Yeah, he was ugly. Um, 
Isaiah 53 verse 2 says, He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground, he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Jesus was not physically attractive, but he was beautiful because of his spirit. It is our spirit that needs to be correct, more so than our outer layer. This is just a shell. Yes, and we need to maintain it and take care of it because it's encasing our spirit. But this is not to be the end all and be all. You've got to constantly be working on that spirit. And so we want to move on. I want to look at, pardon me? Go ahead, Lana. What did you say? What, that Jesus is ugly? Right. Right. Well, I don't, I don't think that he's ugly either. But physically? Physically. physically. But see, it is the way that we see people. It's all, it's, <laughs> but you know what the Bible says? This is what the Bible says. Let me go back to the word. Um, where did it go? Isaiah 53 verse 2. He grew up before him like a tender shoot. And like a root out of dry ground, he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. So that means, to me, it means ugly. Hmm? What you saying? I was saying, even if he wasn't necessarily ugly, but he was sort of like mediocre, like if there's nothing to attract you to, you know what I mean? It's nothing outstanding. When I held up that picture of Tyra, everyone was like, yeah, yeah. And then someone said, I wanted a cheese, a hunk of cheese. That would attract you to the person. Yeah. It, it's, it is the spirit. And just like um, the young lady said, you can meet someone and they look physically nice. Arrogance in a person is very, very unattractive to me. It's very ugly. Arrogance. When you think it's all about you. Oh, please. You know, no, a sweet spirit. During the Learning to Love Yourself class, I asked the question, is there anyone here who hates themselves? And a girl named Ashley raised her hand. When I asked her about it, here's what she had to say. Okay, I don't think I, like, hate myself, but... I don't think so either. But anyway. But I just, I feel insecure about some things that, I mean, spiritually in the church, that I feel like I should be doing because people... You know, they be talking. I mean, it's like the standard that every Christian should be doing what they doing. Yeah. But it's like me, I, I ain't just, I'm not like that. I was yeah. like created something, something else. You are special exactly. and unique. unique. Listen, girl, you ain't nothing wrong with you. You don't, the, Ashley, you're 18. That's what happened. <laughs> Eighteen, I'm telling you, that's a conflicting time, and that's what I've said to her before. When you're eighteen, you are a confused rack. At least I was. I don't know about nobody else, because you're not a child anymore. So your parents can't really kind of boss you and tell you how to make decisions. But you're not fully an adult, so it's a period of getting to know yourself. You are so powerful, and just because, see, I like that you don't conform to what people think you should do. Be you. What they are doing, that's what God, and some people doing what God didn't even create them to do. They're just doing it because they're following fashion. Be true to yourself. I think that's very courageous. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. You're listening to Inspiration with Anastasia. Thank you so much for your time and attention. When you love and respect you, you teach others how to handle you. If you don't love yourself, you're indirectly saying, I've known myself all of my life, and my experience is that I'm not worth loving. Looks are good, but what transcends all of it is the heart of a person. 1 Samuel 16, verse 7 says, Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. In that case, it is godly to judge a person by their heart and not their appearance. Next week, it's all about exploring the reasons we struggle to love ourselves and some very practical solutions. Until then, God bless. I'm Anastasia, and this is Inspiration. Inspiration.